Hello everyone, I'm Kim and Aline, and today is Tuesday, April 23rd. You are now watching Open, a program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to you. Don't forget to stay connected with us via social media at BronxNet TV. Over the last eight years, the Cargo Community Project has focused on community building by improving the living conditions of individuals in need of food, health care, and employment readiness. Their ultimate goal is to create a community that fosters the growth, development, and support of its people. Vice President Patrick Tyson joins me to discuss the organization and their upcoming events. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to be here this, this morning. Now, can you tell me a little bit more about Cargo Community Project and how it began? Well, our foundation began um, several years ago out of the need um, of, we saw a great influx of uh, people coming into our local restaurant, Cooler Runnies Restaurant, and uh, found out that, you know, there was great uh, need for food, you know, in the community. And so uh, we decided that we wanted to, you know, to make this, you know, community more, you know, food, edu you know, is sustainable. So we decided to, um, you know, do um, our Thanksgiving dinner um, that year, the first year, and we served over 2,500 meals. And so uh, we've been going now for the past um, uh, 15 years, you know, uh, wow. doing, doing this in the community. And we also have what is called the community give back, and that's in June, where we, where we blocked off the street. It's like, a, you know, in a block party, and we, you know, give back to the community. We have food and we have fun, live entertainment, and stuff like that. And people, you know, have found out, you know, this is good because there was a lot of loneliness in the community and folks were, you know, um, just a little bit depressed, you know, because of how life, you know, was treating them. And so we, we, we thought that this would be a great opportunity to give back to our community. And we, we decided, you know, someone said to us, hey, why don't you guys make this into um, a 501c3? And henceforth, Cargill Foundation was born and we're just loving to do this all the time. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, can you talk about the impact? You, you kind of briefly mentioned it, but you know, what impact has you know, this organization had on the community and which communities do you serve? So we, we serve uh, Uptown, the Bronx. Well, anyone is welcome. We also service Mount Vernon and um, other nearby communities, Yonkers. And the impact it has um, you know, left on the community is by you know, giving people you know, food, also job readiness. We have professionals from different um, backgrounds come in and, and train our community on how to, you know, have job readiness and also, um, you know, making sure that whatever needs they have are being met through our foundation. Now, in addition to job readiness and, you know, some of the other things that you offer, there's also some board members that serve as mentors. You know, yeah. why was this important to have mentorship available in the community? Well, mentorship in our community is one of uh, the key component of our foundation in terms of, you know, helping to um, mentor, new, you know, young minds. I'm a, I'm a minister by profession, so I, we, we love to um, mentor young people who have been going through um, their troubled youths in our community. And so we have, uh, once per month, we, we get together and we have different uh, persons from the community who are, you know, professionals in their field come in to talk about um, mental health, which is, which is now running rampant in our community. And so we decide to do stuff like that and also um, teaching young people n how to um, not be so engaged in a lot on social media because that can also be a negative inf influence on their lives. But it has been going good. And our board members are always ex excited, you know, um, our president, Ms. Keisha Cargill, is always excited to get, you know, um, our mentorship going. And we're having one coming up real soon. And we're looking forward, you know, for all of our young people to come out and, and be a part of that. Now, I really also want to touch on the employment readiness opportunities because that is so important. Right. Can you tell me a little bit more about this effort and, you know, what does it look like for a participant who is involved in these opportunities? Well, we, uh, well, we have a few persons in our community who comes in to, you know, teach people about how to do interviews, what to wear, what not to wear, and, and mostly, you know, how to, you know, always have eye contact because that's important. And because a lot of folks, you know, they, they want a job, but they're not prepared to, to get a job because they have never had a, an interview before. So um, we have a few persons in our community from um, 
human resources uh, persons will come in and and teach our our community and how to be job ready to to have you know a job in our community in whatever field they're they're embarking on yeah. Now, I think it's so funny that you mentioned that because when you said interviews, my mind automatically just went to like this type of interview. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I think it's cool to bring that up because uh, it is a career path that so many people are interested in. Can you talk mm -hmm. about, you, you mentioned that they can go into any field. So, you know, what are some of the fields that, you know, you see people are interested um, in kind of following that path? Well, some, my, um, our, well, my, our vice president, she is a nurse practitioner. So a lot of folks are going into nursing. Um, I'm a broadcaster, so folks are going into broadcasting and the hospitality um, industry. So we kind of, you know, guide them um, on, on that path. So, you know, ha as to make sure that they're ready to, to take on those responsibilities. You know, and, and some of them are going to college for, for the jobs that they're, they're seeking, especially nursing. We find that we have a lot of folks in our community who wants to be nurses and um, also in the food and hospitality industry, which I'm, in, I'm heavily involved. So we, we kind of guide them on, on the do's and the don'ts in, in that area. Now, what methods do, you know, does the organization use to empower the youth? Okay, so we, uh, we use, um, well, social media, of course. Um, we also, um, as I said, have, um, you know, uh, different uh, persons come in in different fields to, to, to teach them and to guide them. It's not only just to, you know, have them, you know, their minds ready, but also there, there, there are times when we have fun, you know, because kids, they need a little bit of fun now and then. Right. You know, somebody who they can open to and, and trust to have a conversation with. So we have different counselors um, from the community and also from our churches that comes in and, and, and help to, you know, to guide them. Because one of the things I, I've discovered is that you know, um, young people want someone who they can trust by sharing, you know, information. And, and so we, we, we make sure whatever information is given to, to them or to us, it is strictly confidential. So that has helped a lot. Now, I also want to talk about uh, your mantra or battle cry, and that is everyone deserves the right to thrive. Can you tell us, you know, where this came from and, you know, how to, what does it mean to your community and how it empowers your community? Well, um, hmm. so that's a tough one. But in, in, in thriving, we all understand that people have different um, talents. And so they bring those talents into our um, foundation. And, and we utilize the talents the best way we can um, to, to help them and also help to impact our community. That's what I would put it in, in, in a nutshell. Now, I want to talk about some of the upcoming events that you have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, approaching. And one of them is the fish fry event, which yeah. sounds like really fun, sounds delicious. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about, the, uh, about that event? Well, our fish fry is a year-to-year -year event. We, we use this as a method to raise funds for our big community event that's going to take place on June 22nd. And, and so um, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful fish fry. You know, we're, our culture, we're, in the, we're Caribbean. I'm Jamaican. And so, you know, people come out to have some escovitch fish or steam fish, brown stew fish. And so whatever we, um, you know, um, we raise that goes towards our um, effort. And that's going to be um, on the 27th of, um, of, the, of, uh, Ju of uh, April. And folks can visit our website um, to, to get some more information where that is concerned. Now, you mentioned that, you know, you're Caribbean and the organization, you know, has a lot of Caribbean roots. I think that's such a beautiful thing to hear because mm -hmm. it shows that, you know, here in the Bronx, we have so many different cultures here. Right. Can you just talk about the importance of highlighting that, you know, that culture within this organization? Well, um, well, the, the owner of the restaurant, he is Jamaican. And we, we uptown, we have a great, um, our diaspora is a great, you know, Caribbean influence, you know, and... And we all, we invite everyone. So it's not only the Caribbean, but we, we're open to all people of all walks of life. But where we are located and strategically located is a lot of Caribbean uh, folks in the neighborhood. And so we, we, um, we encourage them to be a part of us. And when they come, they do come in great numbers. And, and we love that. No one is left behind. Now, I want to learn a little bit more about some of the past events your organization has hosted. So do you, do you have any, like, fond memories of, you know, some events in the past that you oh. held that were just, like, really amazing? Absolutely. One of the biggest um, events that I love is the uh, Thanksgiving dinner that we, we host on Thanksgiving Day. 
I normally used to go back to Georgia for Thanksgiving, but I kind of put that on hold so I can be um, uh, of service to my community because I believe volunteerism is one of the keys that unlock the door to help in humanity. And so when I, when I see uh, uh, this past year has gone, the line that we had wrapped around the building and we, we served like uh, the shelters. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, um, you know, um, some of the homeless shelters. We do nursing homes. Folks that are shut in. And we, to them alone, we send out um, about 1,500 meals. And then the folks who come, you know, um, is about another 1,000. So it's always good. And that's one of my, I get excited about Thanksgiving, you know, to, to prepare the food and, and see the smiles on folks, you know, their faces when they receive a meal. And we turn no one away. Now, what are your hopes for the future of this organization? Well, our hope is to, is to grow more and to, um, to spread our wings in the community and to reach out to um, all different backgrounds of people and to bring more. One of the things that we're trying to embark on now is um, teaching young people how to cook and having them ready for, you know, um, not only, you know, the professional world but at home because some folks don't, don't know how to cook. Yeah, I'm and one of so, them. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, the owner of the restaurant, Mr. Wendell Cargill, he is uh, preparing now to have, because he's a chef by trade, to bring some of our executive chefs in to train young people on, on, on how to cook and how to have meals ready. Yeah. Well, this is amazing. I love what your organization is doing, especially here in the Bronx. And I want to thank you, you know, for joining us and sharing Absolutely. a little bit about your community and the work that you do. So thank you so much. Indeed, it's a pleasure of mine. Thank you so much. <laughs> to learn more about Patrick's organization and their upcoming fish fry event, please go to their website at www.cargocommunityproject.org. Don't go away. We'll be back with more open after this.